chapters having that you want to address? Well, I have one. Um, we're doing pretty pretty good right now on um, on the programs because we have the indomitable Larry Matthews as long as we have him, and he has a lot of contacts, um, and so that part's great. And I think getting people to the meetings is just kind of time, rate, and distance for us right now as we get all of our ducks in a row. But um, the thing that's bothering me is I don't feel like there's an equitable distribution of the work. Uh, in our chapter, and I don't feel that as a criticism of the board, because they're a great board to work with at the Montgomery County level, but I actually think there's a piece I must need to learn more in terms of my leadership skills, because a lot of it still flows across my desk, and when it does, that's great if I'm not too busy, and if I'm on deadline, which I have been recently for a new book coming out, then things sit, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do the book trailer before I do the MWA post, and, and yet I'm conscious of how many things are like not moving as quickly as they could move um, if they're coming across my desk and I'm not uh, able to give them what I would like. And we're in like first-time-itis, trying to get everything on our website set up and just trying to understand things. And I feel like our, our board understands their jobs. But there's a different workload if you're like the treasurer and your budget is $1,200. I mean, how much time can that take at a chapter level versus um, someone involved in like posting the details of the upcoming meetings on the website and sending out the emails and the millions of little communication details and, and that kind of thing. So I'm looking for input on how to get sort of everybody on board maybe in out-of-the-box kind of ways that would distribute the workload a little bit better for the benefit of the chapter. That's what I'm struggling with right now. Don't all speak at once. <laughs> I think you're seeing a lot of heads nod in sympathy. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've been resoundingly unsuccessful in this, so I have absolutely... <laughs> to that. Thanks so much, Regina. <laughs> I think you have to have someone willing to step up, number one. And, uh, I mean, what I've done in the past is I've always tried to learn the process that I want them to know and know it well enough so that I can teach them the process and cut the corners make it you know here's the most important thing you have to know here's the thing you have to keep your eye on and then you know I, I believe in making people the owner listen you you own it you this is whatever it becomes it becomes because of you and um, um, and let them take charge of it and, and find, a, in a sense, a sense of meaning out of their own work that they do. And, uh, I mean, that's always served me well. And respect, you know, the fact that people bring a high level of talent and capability to, uh, to the table. I mean, that's, that's kind of what I would do. But I will tell you, initially, if you're starting something, whatever that is, the lion's share of the work is going to belong to you. Because you have to kind of get it all moving, mm -hmm. you have to initiate, if you will, the process, mm -hmm. but then you want to take the part of that process and then hand it off to someone, but teach them kind of the way it, 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 it the, the important points and the, and the way it works, and of course you have to have a willing person who wants to be able to step up and do it, that's really key. But, but don't think you're out of the norm here. Mm -hmm. Well, I think our folks are willing, but I don't see that many of them taking initiative. Okay, and again, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, okay? Um, have you asked them to take it? Have you asked them? Well, I'm working with, um, I'm working with a couple of folks. I'm, I want to be careful here because this is being recorded and I don't want anybody to feel like <laughs> I'm not appreciating them. And they're working with me on a project, but they just want me in the loop for everything. And the problem is I want me out of the loop because I want something to get done without my fingers in the pot. Okay, so here's, the, here's the, the fear that most people have. Most people fear the fact that if, if you're not in the loop, they're going to do something that you eventually will not approve of and turn it all around. Not because of you, but mm -hmm. because that's kind of what they're used to, mm -hmm. happening in their everyday lives. Mm -hmm. So the... the, the the, you know, the way to do it is, for better or for worse, is when they make a decision about how it needs to be done, you got to rubber stamp it. And I don't have any problem. You, with in other words, you yeah. just got to say, 
Let's make it happen. Because then that gives them faith and confidence in themselves in being able to step up and do it. But, but many times in, in work situations, we, I know we've all experienced this, you do something, you bring it up, and they go, well, we're not doing that. Where, where, where did you get that idea? It's a crazy idea. No, we ain't doing that. After they've been told, you know, this is yours. You know, make it your own. Step up and live live the dream. And, 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 uh, and no, it's true. It happens all the time. I mean, I'm, that's what I do. It's the leadership stuff, you know. So you sit back and say, live the dream. You got it. And then you bring it in there and they throw it away. I've seen it happen so many times. Not but, that dream. Yeah. <laughs> it, that, that, that's exactly right. You know, there's a guy, uh, uh, Ed Shine, one of the most foremost organizational development people probably on the planet from MIT. And Shai made this one liner that I think is just so absolutely true in one of the books that he wrote. He said, oftentimes when groups are initiating and they're gaining their foothold, um, and you send them off, in a sense, to do something, you have to remember that the relationship at that point is more important than the output of the product. What you're trying to do is build the relationship and the trust and confidence amongst those members so that eventually the product is going to be mm -hmm. fabulous. But you have to understand that if they bring you something and it's not great, that's okay. You can't have perfection out the door. But you're really working on the relationship. You're really working on what those people can do together. And when you get that, then they'll build a confidence that you know, you're not going to oversee them. Right. You know? um, okay, I'll, finish. I'll stop there. But, but that's the point I would try to make. So you have to give it to them and then you know, you're in. But you know what? I think a lot of times the problem is that it's not focused and clear. Mm -hmm. You have a vague notion, well, this is what needs to happen. But it seems like one way to step away is to, to put down all the jobs that need to be done in as clear uh, a manner as you can, and then uh, post them somewhere during a meeting and say, you know, we need volunteers for these jobs. And if no one volunteers, we're not going to do it. You know, so that uh, it becomes clear that uh, if they, anyone is invested in the organization, they see something needs to be done, and knows that if they don't volunteer, nobody volunteers, it's not going to be done. You know, that's one, one way to get around. Yeah, and yes. that's the word, vesting. It's really about mm -hmm. vesting people investing. In, in, in the outcome. Yeah, and letting, being willing to uh, step away from it, you know. If, it's, if people don't take ownership in it, then perhaps step away from it. And so are you thinking in the general membership, or are you thinking amongst the board members? Well, you're working with the board right, right now. They, they, those are the committed people who mm -hmm. are invested, more or less. But you also probably have members with specific expertise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think one of the easy ways to start that process is simply to phone somebody up and say, look, I'm swamped this week. I need PSAs to these three radio stations. They're just two sentences each. Could you please do it by Thursday? If it's tiny enough, people will say yes. And once they've done something for you, mm. the hook. <laughs> and that's what I was going to yeah. say, okay. that uh, when I was president, I used to handpick people that, in fact, I handpicked Amy when I was trying to find a new board. <laughs> I said, Amy, I need someone to take over to do secretary, and I think you're at every meeting, I think you could be doing it. And she and I went back and forth, but she eventually agreed. And I did the same thing, I pleaded with Johnny. <laughs> Well, I'm the most extreme case. <laughs> yeah, but I had a real hard time finding a, a president. No one yeah. wanted to take over president yeah. and, until Glenn stepped up. So, but I what I've been did, to a meeting in forever. But I did. I went through my email list of people that attended and just emailed them directly mm -hmm. and said, look, will you do this? And I had a lot of people reject me, but I also had a lot of people help me out, too. So. Yeah. You could also have fun with it. You could say you're forming a new committee called the Crazy and Outlandish Committee. <laughs> I'm trying to do crazy and outlandish things, I'd like you to be a member. You know, in the sense that, and here's the crazy thing we're working on this week. Okay. How do we do this? You know, that kind of thing. And people kind of go, yeah, I, I want to be part of that group. Yeah. <laughs> First thing you have to do something crazy and outlandish. Well, 
you got to be ready for the results. <laughs> but sometimes the crazy now lands. Audit is, reports. Sometimes the crazy now landish works out to be the really creative and innovative. You know. And I, Alex, so. you're doing a lot of things no one knows you're doing. Paul and I are doing a lot of things no one knows we're doing. So if you take that time, like Eileen said, and go out and spell those out, and then mm -hmm. bring it to the board, because we've been talking about um, job descriptions, mm -hmm. and just say, all right, this is our job descriptions, what belongs to you, what belongs to you. It, it's, you know, it, that where I get stuck is that it really doesn't belong to the treasure or some of the things that I'm thinking of doing. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. sure. It's like I think that um, Louise's job description is perfect. She's got 50 things under her program chair, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and so I can't even imagine trying to get them all done. Well, there are things that logically fit under my title or your title, but we're fairly maxed out right now. So they don't really make sense for the, logically for the treasurer to do it, but he's a totally competent person. He might be willing to do it. That's where I'm wondering if the titles really are that important. I don't know. That's an interesting question. If, but if you don't, if you take the treasurer and, mm -hmm. and have him pick the things that are his job description and have that stay with him, right. and that's his, and it's there, it's on that list he made. And all of us have not written our job descriptions because it's such a tricky thing to do when you're sitting at your computer and thinking, mm -hmm. what am I doing as secretary? You know, the basic mm -hmm. things I can cover, but as far as the other things. Um, it, uh, uh, Amy and Janet and I are, are, are only... Uh, officers, and um, there's been uh, there's probably been. I mean, you you've been keeping the attendance lists. How many people? We're probably the only ones who've been to more than three meetings, right? Uh, yeah. So I, I have it with me. Yeah, you're <laughs> going to look it up. Right, um, I'm well, my. My point is, it's, it seems to me to be quite a distance from that situation to um, having officers for July. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'd be, we, I think I'll be appreciative to, for any tips. <laughs> I, I mean, I know, Amy, you, you've said that the, the key is to bring people to the meetings, yeah. but if it's all, always different people, that's yeah. another right. barrier. Right. Yeah. yeah, you can't build. Yeah, we have one person that I think that's been to three or four meetings, something like that. Is that Jennifer or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Smith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Email her. That's I, what I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. but but I that's what I did. I, I went through my oh. attendance list and I picked the people that had been to at least three meetings mm -hmm. and I just approached them and I said, look, we need officers. Can you be president? Well, I don't think I was even on that list because yeah, I hadn't. Yeah, because you, you, because I did a uh, Yahoo me. group message yeah, too, yeah, yeah. and I said, you know, we're going to lose our chapter if we don't have any officers, and uh, we really were uh, very close to losing our chapter, and that was when Glenn finally uh, s stepped up. But it wasn't until I sent the message at least four or five times. But I did. When I went through our attendance list, and I found the ones that had attended three meetings or four. And I emailed them directly. I said, look, I need officers. Can you do this? Can you do that? Oh, and like I said, a lot of them said no, but a lot of them uh, said, well, I could think about it. And but I'd like to avoid that kind of anxiety, that, that sort of, um, yeah, the begging, suspense. Like, is this yeah. going to work? But, but the other thing that I did was I started at the March meeting and mm -hmm. said, okay, we need officers to be elected in June. So mm -hmm. start thinking about who wants to do this. And I, I just said it every single meeting, too. Yeah. Um, and then by May, well, we had a couple people set up for May. But, mm -hmm. but, the, but also, <coughs> um, when I was trying to get people just to come as speakers or something, I would just go through my list and see what I could do. And, and for program chair, I'm doing, I kind of do the same thing. I, I, um, if I need someone to help out with contests, I go to the people that I know that have been judges or whatever and say, can you help me out with this contest? Um, and that's kind of how I do it. It's more of a one-on-one -on -one approach. It's easier than trying to do lists. If you do a one-on-one, -on -one, they think they have a 
you know, Not important. to mention that if you ask someone to do something and they do it well, you have that person to tap into you because you knew they did their job. How many of us here were pulled aside by someone else in the organization and asked to be a leader? That's why I never do anything well. <laughs> <laughs> and that's also a good reason, I don't know if everyone does it, but to have social time built into your meetings so you Absolutely. get to circulate as a board and find out who those people are. Alex did a wonderful thing. She had this need she found as the leader of the Montgomery County chapter where she needed someone to do communications. So she mentioned at one meeting one night that she needed this and we had a brand new member and he stepped up and took it. She just had to mention it that one time. That was good. Yes. Love but it's because you asked, you put it out there, you asked. And, and that actually brought up something that I was going to bring to this and I didn't get a chance to do it, um, was one of the things we were talking about with Steve Board is having a consistent agenda for chapters for how to run their meetings. And I was going to create one tonight, but, but I didn't get a chance. Anyway, basically, the way I did it as president was the, you stand at the door and you greet every single person that walks in the door. Because if they don't feel like they're welcome, they'll never come back. Then after that, you have a set amount of time, I did about 30 minutes, where you talk about chapter business, what the state board is doing, what the uh, chapter is doing, what jobs you need filled, what volunteers you need, and then you have your speaker, and then question and answer, and then at the end of the meeting, I always did a door prize, and that was another thing that brought people to our meetings, because they like getting something. And they like the idea of winning. And that brought people back. Um, I know I, one person won it in February, and she came back in March and was hoping to win it again, and then she didn't win it again. But, and what I did with the door prizes is I would fill a basket of the theme of that kind of meeting. So in March, we had a St. Patrick's Day meeting, and I had all this Irish stuff. Um, they're giving, giving out a book of the speakers, a good um, door prize. Uh, for for um, the beginning, for January, I had all planning stuff like calendars and um, stuff for your general office type thing. So, I mean, you can make the door prize anything, and it doesn't really have to be that expensive. I always went to the dollar store, and, uh, and it's just a way to draw people back. And if you draw them back, then you can possibly get them to volunteer. But I think if every chapter runs the meetings in a similar way, I mean, I'm, you're always welcome to do your own flavor and stuff. But then you won't forget things. You won't forget to talk about um, the website, or you won't forget to talk about getting your volunteers, or you won't forget and, and to make people feel welcome. because. I know a lot of chapters have been having that issue where people are going away angry and they're complaining to the state board and um, it, we don't want people to be angry. We want them to stay members. What are they angry about? What are they angry about? Uh, well, that they weren't treated right at the, meet, at the chapter meetings. For example? Um, I know that there was one that um, he came to a meeting and he didn't know anybody there, he didn't even know who the president was of the chapter, and he was just ignored, and then, I, I don't know, apparently some negative things were said, and, the, and then he complained. And I don't think that person's going to be a member of MWA. So, I mean, this is their first impression, a lot of times, is the chapter meetings. So we want them to feel welcome. But I would hate to, um, to have a, a sort of get too regulated in terms of the, the agenda for the meetings because like we're really playing with different things. We started having um, the speaker right up front so they could come do their thing and go. And then the second half of the meeting, then we would have a, a break after the speaker so they could sign and sell and people could buy their books and everything. And then we were alternating between sort of chapter business and... Um, readings from our members and then we just decided to take all the housekeeping of starting a new chapter and put it in the board meetings and get it out of the, the chapter meetings. So now what's kind of worked out is that we do announcements in the very beginning. We do introductions 
um, of everybody that's there. That takes you, and we approve the minutes and the agenda. And then we get this, the speaker has an hour for presentation and Q&A. We do about a 20 minute break for signing and selling. And we have been coming back to readings, but we've been feeling like that's not something we want to do every time. So now we're going to kind of um, try to do more of a networking and interactive kind of social time. And I ha we haven't really decided how to structure that, so we're going to play with some different things. But one thing that I always try to, to do is writing or what they're reading or something like that and then to remind everybody before we go to the break to go talk to somebody that they don't know and I'm trying to remind the board to really be the ambassadors um, to go and talk to the people that they don't know and I remember at the last meeting there was someone new and I just didn't get over to say hi to her and um, a lot of people were trying to talk to me and I just never made it and I was like what if somebody just walked out but there needs to be six of me trying to make sure that, you know, that we do that. It's like being, I'm sorry, it's like being, being at your, your wedding and worried, wanting that you forgot to say hi to Aunt Gladys and she's going to be bad now for you for 10 years. We, a lot of chapters have a, a designated meeting where it's open mic night where mm -hmm. the members get to read and then that's the only thing that they do. We did that. That was our lowest attended meeting so far this year. I don't know if that was coincidence or not. <laughs> Um, so we're just, the point is that we're just playing and we're, we're going and we're going to try doing um, like exit surveys, uh, maybe in person and also electronically asking people what they valued and what they'd like to see more of. And we are just really experimenting. Um, but one thing that seems to be consistently valuable is a presentation, then some time afterwards for people to connect with the speaker and buy their books and some kind of networking and social time. And aside from that, there's nothing consistent. Okay. Every chapter, every chapter has can have. I think it's important that every chapter has a, has an organization that's unique to the character of its attendees and its environment. But I think that it's also there are probably some things that we want to make sure every chapter touches on at least at some point. It doesn't have to be a rigid agenda structure, but I think there could be a checklist of things that you just want to make sure the five things that you hit before everybody walks out of that room. At some point, whether it's at the beginning, the middle, or the end, what this is for greeting people is absolutely essential. Making sure people feel welcome, uh, making sure, reminding them that where they are, you know, that this is the chapter, this is the so and so chapter of the Maryland Writers Association. Mention the website, uh, point out the officers in the room, introduce yourself and, and your role, uh, it's, give a little quick 30 second history of what MWA is for the newbies. I tried to do that at pretty much every Baltimore meeting, but particularly when there were a lot of new faces, just give a, a minute recap of what MWA is and, and what it what its benefits for members are. Uh, talk about and, and, and talk about being a member. How much it costs, how you sign up, what you get for it, you know, what what's the point of you being here? Is what's the point of our chapters being here? Is to is to bring bring people in who can eventually be members. So don't forget to hit on that. But make it a short list, and that's something that maybe the board, we can come up with and provide the chapters. And then you can work with that as a script. But I don't, I don't know about if it, you know, if it needs to be any more formal than that. I don't think so. I think you chapters know what works best for you. Yeah. So if you hit these guidelines and then do the rest your way. It's helpful, though, to hear things, because I did hear from Kara Lee um, about, I guess, one of those incidents where someone was upset because they weren't introduced. And I had been going back and forth because at first we had our meetings a little too full and we couldn't get through everything. And I was like, oh, maybe we won't do introductions because it can take 10 minutes to introduce 20 people. Yep. But, but I do think that it's probably an important 10 minutes. Um, so, and we do name tags for every meeting. Um, which I think yeah. is really, but it's, really it's good for the, yeah. the people that are there that are attending to stand up or even to sit down, mm -hmm. but to stand up and mm -hmm. say, hi, I'm Elise Harris mm -hmm. and this is what I'm writing. Or, mm -hmm. um, uh, or... She stole my bird. <laughs> <laughs> um, Will you ever forgive me, John? <laughs> when you have a smaller group, like 15 people, it does make it easier to do that. But like I said, it makes everyone feel like they're a part of something. Mm -hmm. But, but the, the downside of our situation is we have to be out of there at 9 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. when, when and you, you need a code to get out. So we yeah. have our members trapped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We, we have to wrap things up 
early enough so that the person, the, the, us, I mean, we have to physically go to the door. Yeah, so, and, and have everything gathered mm -hmm. up to be out of there. So, yeah, there are downsides. Of so course, the advantage is, is we have a trapped audience for a while. We can start, you know. Getting them up for memberships. We're not opening the door until someone volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, I think we can offer a service for, for Sunrise Senior Living. That, we can, if somebody could tell their grandma that, that this is a writer's meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when do you usually wrap up your meetings? Like what time of night? Well, we flip between Wednesday nights and Saturday mornings. Because um, we have some Orthodox Jewish folks that can't come on Saturdays. Okay. So we do 7 to 9 p.m. on Wednesdays. On mm -hmm. alternate months we do 10 to 12 on Saturday mornings. Um, and so basically I need to get in the room a half an hour before and I need a half an hour after to clean up. Mm -hmm. So it's really a three hour spread. Um, because it just takes that long to set out all the gear and then it takes that long for everybody to chit chat with everybody and clear out it in the end. So We don't get chit chat time at all after our meetings lately. Well, unless we build it in. Build it in. Yeah. Or we yeah. yeah. go out into the parking lot. Yeah. 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 I, did try, I did yeah. try to always have a, a, a little bit of social time after the meetings, but one of the things that I also did was I asked everybody that attended to help clean up, mm -hmm. and that always worked. They mm -hmm. always, everybody always put the chairs together, and because mm -hmm. the sunrise, you have to have it, the room set up the way you arrived. Mm -hmm. So even if you rearrange it, you mm -hmm. have to make sure it's back the way it yeah. was. So like what time did your speaker start? And so when do they have to I always had it from 7.30 to 8.30. So they only had an hour rather than, and then the half an hour for chapter business, and then the half an hour for the cleanup and social time, buying books, whatever. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, we limited um, the speakers to an hour of actually presenting and answering mm -hmm. questions. Because that seems to be what it seems to be. Um, and maybe, oh, go ahead, yeah. No, go ahead. If you're having trouble finding social time, do a social only event, do a happy hour on some Friday mm -hmm. or something. Invite people who can come. It's a great way to get to know people. What sometimes I sometimes the NWA gives you reasons to drink. So <laughs> no, no, no. Not no. speaking from personal experience. Of no, not. no. But I hear from a lot of our folks that they really value that that networking and social time. Mm -hmm. So it's um, one of the it's one of the strengths. From every chapter. Right. It's an awful lonely job. Maybe you get a little lonely. lonely. We're all we're all isolated. We all work. I'm lonely. We all work in isolation, and this is our chance to chat with each other. Have any of you done surveys, and if so, have you gotten any useful information from it? I did a survey. Um, I wanted to find out what people wanted at meetings. Uh, I did it through Sur Survey Monkey. You're allowed with Survey Monkey. You're allowed ten questions for free, and I had gotten, I think, eleven percent of our members to respond, which actually. It's higher than direct mail. So. Baltimore chapter did a survey uh, at once a year for a couple of years and uh, asked really broad questions about when you'd like to meet, kinds of speakers you'd like to have, uh, do you like the venue, do you have any ideas for better venues, and we did use that information. The form is still up on the well, the form is probably still not out there, but I think we have a copy of the form on the board list if you wanted, if you need a template. Okay, what I've handed out is the evaluation, so if you could take a few minutes and fill it out and let us know what you like, what you didn't like. Are we done? Are we wrapping up? It's 25 at 5, so. Oh my god! And if you have any comments for me about the sponsorship stuff, whether it's the guidelines or the brochure, please send that to me. I think my email's there, right? And if you have any questions or want to compare notes with any of us at the state level on how to do things or direct the problem, email us, please. Or call. Yes, please. All that waste paper, sir. Oh, no. Yeah, no one's getting out of here without taking Yeah, I was going to say, anyone that wants to take the food home, um, I'm planning to take some home, but anybody else that wants to take some, go ahead.